Hi, I'm Preston Lim Sako, a nurse professor at Seliman University College of Nursing. In this presentation, I will talk about caring. The learning outcomes include the following. So after completing this module, you will be able to discuss the meaning of caring, identify nursing theories that focus on caring, analyze the importance of different types of knowledge in nursing, describe how nurses demonstrate caring in practice, evaluate the importance of self-care for the professional nurse, and identify the value of reflective practice in nursing. So in this age of technology competence and efficiency, the knowledge and skills embedded in caring practice are often overlooked. Nurses are challenged to sustain their caring nursing practice while attempting to respond to the complex and competing technological demands of modern day healthcare. So caring is central to all helping professions and enables people to create meaning in their lives. Caring is also sharing deep and genuine concern about the welfare of another person. All right, consider the following examples of caring emerging from nursing situations. A client um, experiencing post-operative pain or pain after a, a surgical operation is given medication to control her symptoms. And then the nurse talks quietly and holds her hand for a few minutes as the pain resolves. In this situation, the nurse's presence in itself provides comfort for the client, and that is an act of caring. Another situation is this. After the student nurse washes the hair of an older woman who is immobilized or cannot move and applies her makeup, she helps the woman into a wheelchair to greet her daughter and grandchildren. So the woman is extremely grateful and her sense of dignity is enhanced by this personal care. That is also another act of caring um, through the nursing profession. So Milton Mayeroff in 1990, um, who is a, a noted philosopher, has proposed that to care for another person is to help that person grow and actualize himself. Okay, Mayeroff defines major ingredients of caring that provide structure and further description of this process. And these include the following. Knowing, knowing which means understanding the other's needs and how to respond to these needs. It also involves alternating rhythms, which signifies moving back and forth between the immediate and long-term meanings of behavior and also considering the past. Another concept uh, connected to caring is patience, which enables the other person to grow in his or her own way and in his or her own time. Another is honesty. So honesty, which includes awareness and openness to one's own feelings and a genuineness in caring for the other person. Trust. Trust involves letting go to allow the other to grow in his own way and in his or her own time. Humility. So humility means acknowledging that there is always more to learn and that learning may come from any source. Hope. Hope is the belief in the possibilities of the other's growth and courage. It is the sense of going into the unknown. So informed by insight from past experiences. So all these elements, knowing, alternating rhythms, patience, honesty, trust, humility, hope, courage, are connected with the concept of caring. Caring is the heart of nursing's identity. 
And indeed, the root of the word nursing means nurturance or care. So nurse scholars have reviewed the literature, conducted research, and analyzed nurses' experiences resulting in the development of theories or, and models of caring. And these theories and models are grounded in humanism and the idea that caring is the basis for human science. And based on studies in nursing and anthropology, um, Leininger notes that caring as nurturing behavior has been present throughout history and is one of the most critical factors in helping people maintain or regain health. And that is your culture, care, diversity, and universality theory of nursing by Leininger. Next is theory of bureaucratic caring by Ray. So Ray's theory of bureaucratic caring focuses on caring in organizations, just like hospitals. Okay, and they are seen as cultures. The theory suggests that caring in nursing is contextual and is influenced by the organizational structure. That's, thus, it's called bureaucratic caring. It has something to do with organizational structure and culture. Next is caring the human mode of being by Roach. So Roach focuses on caring as a philosophical concept and proposes that caring is the human mode of being. All individuals are caring and develop their caring abilities by being true to self being real and being who they truly are. Thus, caring is not unique to nursing, according to Roach. Next is Nursing as Caring by Boykin and Schonhofer. So Boykin and Schonhofer suggest the, that the purpose of the discipline and profession of nursing is to know people and nurture them as individuals living and growing in caring. So respect for people as caring individuals and respect for what matters to them are assumptions underlying the theory of nursing as caring. Next is the theory of human care by Jean Watson. Watson's theory of human care views caring as the essence and the moral ideal of nursing. So take note, essence and moral ideal of nursing, that's Watson. Theory of caring by Swanson. Swanson defines caring as a nurturing way of relating to a valued other toward whom one feels a personal sense of commitment and responsibility. Next is technological competency as caring in nursing by Rosanna Watson, a theory of nursing that is focused on knowing persons across the universal technological domain, and this is crucial to aid nurses or help nurses in their practice and help preserve the humanness of the persons in their care. So the TCCN or the technological competency as caring in nursing is the only middle range nursing theory that specifically addresses technological knowing within the harmonious coexistence of nursing, technology, and caring. So these are some of the nursing theories that we focus on and um, are mainly um, emphasizing caring in nursing. In this slide, take a look at the six C's of caring in nursing from Caring the Human Mode of Being by Roach. Okay, so the six C's are compassion, competence, confidence, conscience, commitment, and comportment. Compassion is the awareness of one's relationship to others, sharing their joys, sorrows, pain, and accomplishments. Participation in the experience of another. That is compassion. Next is competence. This is having the knowledge, and not just the knowledge, but also the judgment, the skills, the energy, experience, and motivation required to respond adequately to the demands of one's professional responsibilities. Confidence is comfort with self, client, and others that allows one to build trusting relationships. Conscience 
this includes morals, ethics, and an informed sense of right and wrong. It is also the awareness of personal responsibility. Commitment. This is the deliberate choice to act in accordance with one's desires as well as obligations, resulting in investment of self in a task or cause. And the sixth C is comportment. This is the appropriate bearing, demeanor, dress, and language that are in harmony with a caring presence. Presenting oneself as someone who respects others and demands respect is comportment. The following are the social and ethical responsibilities of nurses in relation to caring. So the nurse must care for the self in order to care for others. Nurses must remain committed to human care ideals. Cultivation of a higher, deeper self and higher consciousness leads to caring. Human care can only be demonstrated through interpersonal relationships. Honoring the connectedness of all, unitary consciousness leads to transpersonal caring healing. Education and practice systems must be based on human values and concern for the welfare of others. So hopefully you will develop all these um, elements. Um, these are taken from Watson's philosophy and theory of transpersonal caring. In this slide, you will see the caring processes from Swanson's theory of caring, which include knowing, being with, doing for, enabling, and maintaining belief. So knowing includes striving to understand an event as it has meaning in the life of the other person. And its sub-dimensions include avoiding assumptions, centering on the one cared for, assessing thoroughly and seeing cues and also engaging the self of, of both. Um, being with is uh, being emotionally present to the other. And this includes being there, conveying ability, sharing feelings, not burdening, doing for other um, doing for is doing for the other as he or she would do for the self and if it were pos at all possible and this includes comforting anticipating performing competently skillfully or skillfully protecting preserving dignity um, these are the sub dimensions of doing for next is enabling this is facilitating the other's or the other person's passage through life transitions and unfamiliar events. Subdimensions include informing or explaining, uh, supporting or allowing, focusing, generating alternatives or thinking it through, and validating or giving feedback. And last but not the least, maintaining belief. This is sustaining faith in the other person's capacity to get through an event or transition and face a future with meaning. And subdimensions include believing in or holding in esteem, maintaining a hope-filled attitude, offering realistic optimism, and going the distance. So these are the caring processes that um, is in Swanson's theory of caring. So as you've seen, nursing involves different types of knowledge that are integrated to guide nursing practice. Nurses require scientific competence, empirical or empirical knowledge. Also, it requires therapeutic use of self, which is the personal knowing, and then moral ethical awareness, which is the ethical knowing, and creative action, which is aesthetic knowing. And these four types of knowledge were identified by Carper and published in 2009 from her observations of nurses' activities. An understanding of each type of knowledge is important for the student of nursing because only by integrating all ways of knowing can nurses develop uh, a professional practice. 
So how are the ways of knowing developed? Personal knowing is developed through critical reflection on one's own actions and feelings in practice. Empirical knowing is gained from studying scientific models and theories and from making objective observations. Ethical knowing involves confronting and resolving conflicting values and beliefs, while aesthetic knowing arises from a deep appreciation of the uniqueness of each individual and the meanings that individual ascribes to a given situation. So the nurse who practices effectively is able to integrate all types of knowledge to understand situations more holistically. And if the nurse is able to understand the situation in a holistic manner, then most likely this kind of nurse is able to provide holistic nursing care. Here you can see in the figure how the four ways of knowing are interconnected. So again, the four ways of knowing include empirical knowing, ethical knowing, aesthetic knowing, and personal knowing. So how does a nurse demonstrate caring? Given similar situations, why is one nurse judged to be caring while another is said to be uncaring? Nurse theorists and researchers have studied this question and identified caring attributes and behaviors. So common caring patterns include knowing the client, nursing presence, empowering the client, compassion, and competence. Knowing the client in this personal knowledge of the client is a key in the caring between nurse and the client. So the nurse aims to know who the client is and in his or her uniqueness. For nursing presence, the nurse is aware of his or her own thoughts and feelings, while also aware of an interconnectedness with the client. Authentic presence involves empathy and openness to positive or negative feelings, non-possessive warmth, a relaxed posture, and facial expressions that are congruent with other communications. Next is empowering the client. Here, uh, through knowing the client and engaging in a mutual relationship, the nurse is able to identify and build on client family strengths. This empowering relationship includes mutual respect, trust, and confidence in the other, the other's abilities and motives. Nurses both advocate for and are advocates for clients and families. Compassion. So the caring nurse is described as warm and empathetic, compassionate, and concerned. Like empathy, compassion involves participating in the client's experience with sensitivity to the person's pain or discomfort and a willingness to share in their experience. Competence. The competent nurse employs the necessary knowledge, judgment, skills, and motivation to respond adequately to the client's needs. So these are the caring encounters, knowing the client, nursing presence, empowering the client, compassion, and competence. When you exercise this, then patients and, family and their families will be able to view you as a caring nurse. So as nurses take on multiple commitments to family, work, school, and community, they risk exhaustion, burnout, and stress. Obstacles to self-care may be professional, related to the demands of a particular work setting, or may be personal, such as poor health habits or unrealistic expectations of the self. So it is imperative or very important that nurses attend to their own needs because caring for self is central to caring for others. Mayor Roth describes caring for self as helping oneself grow and actualize one's possibilities. Self-awareness and self-esteem are int intimately connected to self-care. 
Reflection and practice. Reflection is thinking from a critical point of view, analyzing why one acted in a certain way, and assessing the results of one's actions. So to develop oneself as a caring practitioner, reflection and practice must be personal and meaningful. So remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. You need to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. 12 things you would love to do. Okay, Recreation is very important to, uh, when, you, when you consider self-care. Self-care also includes taking time to do the things that bring you joy and stimulate creativity. Nurses need to reward themselves to experience spontaneity and even to, date, to take down time or time to do nothing. Defending the right to this time may take courage and conviction in the face of others demands so here is in this box 25-3 um, are 12 things you would love to do okay, and this is intended to help a person recapture a sense of joy fun and self-reward so try this one okay we often put off doing the simple things that bring us joy and happiness so make a list of 12 things you would love to do after reviewing the list in the left and then post your list where you can see it. Resolve to carry out one activity by a specified time. Okay, I hope you enjoy this activity. Here are some of the references okay, in this presentation. For questions, please post in the open forum in your virtual classroom. Thank you.